Welcome to Fred Achando Analysis, ladies and gentlemen. The political supremacy battle between President William Samoy Ruto and his predecessor, Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, continues to hit the ground every day, and it has taken a new turn. Barely a few days after the rebel MPs who are allied to William Samoy Ruto held a meeting in Nakuru and resolved to suspend the officials who are allied to Uhuru Kenyatta and replace them with those who are pro William Ruto. The letter was sent to the Registrar of Political Parties notifying her of the changes. And uh, there is one thing that everyone was waiting for because the Uhuru allied members of parliaments and the officials were saying that the meeting that was held in Nakuru was not properly constituted. And so they laughed off the move saying that they cannot be hosted from office because that meeting was illegal. So people were waiting for the ruling of the registrar of the political parties. So Madam Anne Nderitu ruled that the meeting that was held in Nakuru was actually properly constituted, uh, constituted in accordance with the Jubilee Party uh, constitution. And this is what Anne said. Anne Nderitu said that this office acknowledges receipt of your letter dated February 10th and uh, received on February 13th. On the Jubilee Party National Executive Council meeting held on February 10th, wherein you submitted a notice of NEC meeting dated February 2nd, minutes of the NEC meeting, resolutions of the NEC, and a list of NEC members present at the meeting. So, Madam, uh, Madam Deritu continues to say that the letter addressed to the Jubilees. The letter was addressed to Jubilee Party Se Deputy Secretary General, Mr. Joshua Kutun. Now, the last part is what we call the last stroke that broke the camel's back. It says that the office has taken notice of the content of your submissions and the resolutions. It is noted that the meeting was properly convened as per the party constitution. So that is what Madame de Ritu says. And in a nutshell, now this means that if the meeting was properly constituted, then the resolutions are also within the constraints of the Jubilee party. Now, I want us to look at uh, what this portends to Uhuru Kenyatta and Jubilee as a whole. Even as we delve so much into this, I still want to remind you that uh, we continue to appeal to you to help us buy a camera. As you can see, most of my videos are still very dark. It is because of the facilities that I'm using. We launched a 50 shillings challenge where we request you to send 50 shillings to the M-Pesa uh, number that is there. The name is Frederick Cotin. We we'll really appreciate you if you will help us to improve our content. Now, what this portends to Uhuru Kenyatta is something that uh, will be very, very much interesting because Jubilee currently has 29 members of parliament and uh, five senators. And you all know that each and every month they send some money to the Jubilee party. Now, they have said that the, the members who are pro William Ruto have said that they don't want to send money to a party that is led by non-elected officials. And they are saying that if you look at the vice chair of the Jubilee Party, it is uh, David Muradi, non-elected member. The treasurer is Jeremiah Kioni, non-elected. And so they are saying that they don't want to submit the, 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 the monthly submission. So they are saying they are going to stop. Now, if this stops, I'm telling you that they, they want to cripple the jubilee because when they don't remit money then it means that even the operations are crippled number two currently jubilee gets 135 million kenya shillings from the political parties fund 
So this, they are also scrambling to get part of this money because once they have hosted the Uhuru allied officials, then they will remain with the people they have elected. So they will be in control of this money because experts are saying that one of the reasons why we have this supremacy battle within the party is because they want to control this money. And uh, this is Ruto's hidden hand. When they succeed, then Ruto will add all this to the already uh, bigger part that is in the UDA. I don't know whether this will succeed because when they were suspending the officials, they did not touch on, Uhuru, on uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, who is the chairman and is the owner of the party. I don't know what uh, exactly is going to happen, but this seems to be what is happening. I have a feeling that Uhuru will not have a say in the party. He will remain the chairman, the patron, everything in the party, but there is no any resolution that will pass if Uhuru wants it to pass because all, in fact, all the members are now allied to the William Ruto. He's got just a few members who still listen to him. So this means that whenever he wants something to pass, it will not pass. Every resolution that will be passed from the larger member will go through, but Uhuru will not have his say in the party. It will be like a, a, um, a soldier without a bullet. So a soldier given a gun, but there are no bullets in it. So moving forward, we want to see how things transpire because I don't think there will be anything that uh, Uhuru will succeed in passing within the party. And the Ruto also directed them because they had also said that they want to commence a process of decamping Azimio. They don't want to be part of Azimio. They have said that they want to belong to Kenya Kwanzaa. They want to sign a post-election pact to work with William Ruto. But Ande Ritu said that this is not possible. If they want to decamp from Azimio, then they must follow the constitution that was signed. So this is good news to Uhuru Kenyatta because now they must exhaust the internal uh, uh, resolution mechanisms where they will going. They are going to sit down to deliberate on their affairs. Now, the only challenge, like I said before, is that the Ruto allied members are many compared to the few Kenya Jeremiah Kioni. They will have their day. They will have their day by the end of these meetings. William Ruto is also trying to ensure that uh, he deflates Uhuru Kenyatta and to a larger extent deflate Raila Moludinga. It is uh, perceptional politics. Raila has said that they are going for the rallies where they are announcing that they don't recognize the legitimacy of President William Samoy Ruto and uh, they have said that William Ruto should vacate office. Just the other day, Raila said that soon they are going to give the results that were given by the whistleblower per constituency, per word, to show all Kenyans that they won. And Uhuru Kenyatta, recently after attending uh, the burial of the former cabinet secretary in the, in the education sector, Professor George Maboha, announced that he is retired but not tired, indicating that he was ready to continue with politics against uh, the constitution, and it seems many people are saying that it seems that he's not even interested interested in the package that is allocated to retired presidents because the law requires that he should not hold any office. The law requires that he should not take active uh, polit uh, be active in political activities six months after vacating office. But it seems after being frustrated by William Ruto, Uhuru Kenyatta wants to continue with politics. So William Ruto wants to ensure that he isolates Raila so that the perception is that Jubilee is not with the party. Jubilee, the Jubilee wing will only be having Uru Kenyatta, maybe David Murad, who has been missing in the rallies. So the only person who has been active there is Jeremiah Kioni. So William Ruto wants to ensure that this happens. Now the only fear is that these people can even decide to suspend Uru Kenyatta because there are many. They can convene another meeting like the one that happened in uh, Nakuru and they say that uh, we don't want, we want to change the chairman because already they have changed the secretary and the, the, the vice chair. They can make this, uh, this, this uh, courageous move and just decide, the, the bold move, and decide that we are replacing Uru Kenyatta and they say that we want Uru Kenyatta to remain in the periphery as a patron but he should not hold any office. If this happens, I don't know what will happen. Now, experts are saying 
that uh, there are going to be two camps in Jubilee. And one of them will have to swallow humble pie. One of them must decamp and form their own party. Because as far as I'm concerned, this party belongs to Huru Kenyatta and the Huru family. You can take this to the bank. These big families cannot survive without a party. Raila Molodinga has got the ODM. Uhuru Kenyatta has the Jubilee. William Ruto has got the UDA. Moi family has got the Kanu party. They can never survive. You saw the other time, William Ruto tried rocking the, the, the Kanu party by taking Nick Salat. Nick Salat had said that they want to go for elections to have new leadership. But, with, uh, but uh, Gideon Moi remained firm and instead they expelled uh, Nick Salat from the party. This is what William Ruto is trying to do. He wants to ensure that all these big families are rendered politically inert so that they cannot take part in any political activities. Whether this will succeed is something that we wait and see. Now, the biggest question that uh, one must ask is this. When you succeed in taking the officials and taking the, the, the elected members, have you also taken with you the ordinary mwanainchi? For example, if you take someone like uh, Kanini Kega, have you also taken those who follow Kanini Kega? Because if you succeed in taking, maybe for example, Jalango from Langata, and you don't take the electorates in Langata, then it remains a perception of politics. You don't succeed so much. And this is the only challenge that William Ruto is facing in Nyanza after taking the nine members with him in State House. The people of Nyanza are really rebellious and they don't want. In fact, in Bondo, Gideon Ochanda, the member of parliament in Bondo, has already been expelled. He was the chairman of the ODM party in that area and he has relinquished that, 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 that position. Maybe it can succeed in uh, Mount Kenya because William Ruto started all this long time ago and they feel that Gashago is now in power, so it is very easy for them to manipulate things there. But in Nyanza and the larger parts of uh, Raila stronghold, it is not going to be very easy. They want to ensure that Uhuru Kenyatta resigns, because if there is one thing that has been a thorn in their flesh, it's the fact that Uhuru Kenyatta is still active in politics, he's got some influence, so, so they want to compel him to just make sure that he does not take part. They want him to resign from the, the, the party hierarchy, to remain just a retired president, maybe to now take part in peacekeeping mission in Congo. We just want to see how things transpire, but this battle, this supremacy battle, is something that must will continue for some time. We don't know who will blink first, because Uru now has found some solace and refuge uh, in, in, in Raila's shadow. And that is why you see him coming back and making sure that they want to work together. This is why Jeremiah Kioni is still in Azimio. I don't know what you think, ladies and gentlemen, but things continue to, continue to be very interesting. Tell me what you think in the comment section, and thanks for watching. Again, kindly continue to support our channel.